Good morning, YouTube. It seems my videos are finally picking up some traction, being getting more views and support, and I absolutely appreciate it. So, I decided to take this up a notch and hopefully somehow feed myself through YouTube. If I can't, I will still be content with the fact that I'm at least doing something meaningful. Today, I have a guide to help you get started with your Flipper Zero. This is by no means a complete tutorial, and just me showing you a couple things you can do to get going if you are feeling a little lost. So, here you are, sitting in front of your computer, wondering what you can do with your new Flipper Zero. And worry not, after this video, you will be a bit cooler than you were 10 minutes ago. Alright, so the first thing you will need is the micro SD card. Most of the functionalities of the flipper will not be available without an SD card, so you need it. You need a name brand card in FAT32 or XFAT format. You can format any SD cards to such specifications, but some might not like it and will give you a funny shit. So stick with the name brand card. The size of the SD card cannot be over 128 gigs due to the limitations of the file system on the flipper. Realistically, you will not need more than 32. The SD card allows you to store all the delicious signals and information you capture with the flipper and analyze or emulate them later. Then you will need the QFlipper app. It is available for Mac, Linux, and Windows. There is also a mobile app, but its functionalities are limited compared to the computer version. The QFlipper allows you to update firmware, manage files, and repair your flipper shell it comes to it. You can install official firmware updates with one button click, or flash your own custom firmware with the app. Want to know how to do that? Check out my FBT video, linked in the description. Alright, so first thing I want to show you is installing custom firmware. And the reason why you want to do this is that unofficial firmware are updated much more often and contains all kinds of interesting plugins. There are several different unofficial firmwares, the most active ones being Rogue Masters and Unleashed. To install an unofficial firmware, go to the GitHub page linked in the description. On the right of the page, you will see a section that says Releases. Click on that and you will be given a list of files. You can safely ignore everything else here except the DFU file and the update zip file. There are two ways you can do this. The first one is to download the DFU file and flash it with QFlipper. Easy as that. And the second one is to download the zip file and put it on the SD card and update from the flipper end. The second way is a little faster, but I don't prefer it because I'll need to delete the folder later. Okay, so now you got your flipper, your micro SD card, and the firmware. All the elements are here. Let's fucking have some fun, shall we? See, one of the reasons I want you to install unofficial firmware is the Spectrum Analyzer. And this plugin is included in most unofficial firmwares. It simply tells you what frequencies are running around you. Click on it, and you can see a live feed of signals. This is one of the easiest ways to have something happen without all the need for painful researches and reading. Once you notice a piece of signal, you can then move on to the sub Hertz menu and try to capture the signal so you can either analyze or emulate it, meaning using it to gain access to things not quite meant for you. Find in the description an awesome repository for all kinds of sub Hertz capture files, Everything from Tesla to gas price signs to sex toys. You now own it. Hack the world. Right, right. To install the files, go to the GitHub page, click on code and download the zip. Extract the files to the subjects saved folder in your SD card database. To actually use it, identify the identity of your victim device, choose the according signal, click on emulate and watch it go. My turn. Another thing you can do immediately is to read your identification cards with the NFC reader. The reader does not react to my PA driver's license, but it detects my debit card, passport, and other ID. If you have building key fobs, you can try reading them as well. 
You will not be able to emulate a bank card or an ID card with a flipper, but you can obtain some information, and it's just a fun thing you can do. If you have hotel cards and security access cards, try reading them with the 125 kHz RFID antenna. You can indeed emulate a large number of access cards with the flipper. If you don't have any of that, just try generic tickets, passes, and even documents. A lot of modern paperwork and cards incorporates the near-field communication technology. You'd be surprised. You still here? You still want more? Well, I got more for you. Yet another thing you can do right out of the box with the flipper is to attack your own PC with a bad USB. The bad USB is essentially an exploit that disguises the flipper as an input device, and executes malicious intents via keystroke combinations. The flipper comes with two scripts, one for Mac and one for Windows. Don't worry, they only paint the flipper on your notepad. Plug the flipper in your computer and simply run the script. Yay! More things happening. Look at that. The bad USB scripts are written in a low-level language called the Ducky script. And check out I am Jacoby's repository for more interesting scripts. Also, obviously, linked in the description. Nearly forgot to mention infrared. The flipper is also a infrared transmitter that allows you to interact with a wide range of devices. To get started, simply hold the flipper near any infrared remote. And click on Learn New Remote. The flipper will then determine the protocol and format of that signal. Using our newly learned infrared command, I turn on my roommate's TV. Bravo! More stuff is happening. And how cool is that? In the description, you will also find a repository for all kinds of captured infrared signals. Installing these files is the same as the sub gigahertz files. You also use them in a similar fashion by pressing the button. The only difference is that the IR files goes under the infrared instead of sub gigahertz folder. One more thing you can do with the flipper is getting one of these USB-C adapters. This is a JSOX 90 degree adapter, and it's here so I don't wear out the charging port. Although it's quite unlikely, but but it's five dollars for two, and just might as well. Just keep in mind that you do need to trim the silicon case if you wish to use an adapter. There you have it, a starter guide for the Flipper Zero. I'll let you all go back to whatever you were doing before, and have a good one. See ya.